So instead of being the girl that they could have had, you should be the girl they can't have. Make that cut. Block, 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 blockity block. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Emma back with another video and today I'm going to be talking all about the red flags to notice when you're dating or in a relationship. My favorite topic. When I see the red flags, I decide that the red is my favorite color and <laughs> completely ignore them. But the point is, I am learning. It's been a painful learning experience but I'm learning and I want to share this knowledge with you. We are looking at the actions, not the words. Repeat after me, we're looking at the actions, not the words. <laughs> Ultimately, you want to not waste time with the wrong person. You want to know what their intentions are, and I think looking at these red flags, being aware of them, can really help you decide whether this is a relationship for you or not. And these red flags might not necessarily mean that person is cheating and you have to break up with them straight away, but, you know, knowledge is power. We have to be one step ahead in this. So I hope this video really helps you. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please do give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button below, and let's get into the video. First and foremost, <laughs> are you ready for this one? The sex life changes. And there's two different ways I would say they can change. First of all, your partner can lose interest, lose sexual drive, can become dismissive, uninterested. You notice that and you're not gonna wanna hear this, but the reason they are not wanting sex with you is they're having sex with someone else. That is the harsh reality of it and we have to learn to accept it and move on. <laughs> that could be sexting, phone sex, sexy FaceTime to just having a whole other girlfriend. <laughs> so my therapist actually told me that society as a whole accepts that men get rejected all the time for sex. For women though, if you're rejected, it's a whole other ball game. You could be dressed up in the sexiest outfit, you can be like doing the most, and that person may not be interested at that time. Obviously you gotta deal with that rejection and just go elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Obviously this relationship isn't serving you and you deserve better. Another way, okay, which is an interesting one. It's when your partner suddenly, they do something completely new. You, maybe you haven't seen your partner for a little while, a week, two weeks, a month, who knows, and they come back and they're suddenly doing a whole bunch of different things that you have never done before with that person. You know, new tricks, be aware of those because that is a red flag. That is a red flag. And you're like, hmm, where did you learn that? <laughs> A major red flag is when your partner starts projecting. So projecting means when they put whatever characteristics or traits they dislike about themselves on you. In an example of someone who's cheating, they will blame you. They will say that they think you're cheating. It can happen in many scenarios as well. And it also kind of leads into gaslighting where your partner generally or someone close to you makes you think that you're going crazy, that, that it's all an illusion, that you're wrong for thinking such things. That is a real red flag. When you see that happening, when you feel that going on, that should be like an alarm bell in your head because that's not right. You know that's not how relationships should be. That's not the healthy dynamic you want between you and your partner where you know he's suspicious of you or she's suspicious of you and that's not going to end well. Another one is when someone is extremely defensive. So they are triggered by things that would otherwise be quite small or trivial. And generally that means they're holding a lot inside and they have an anger or resentment for something else. Often, for example, say you see a picture on the phone and you're questioning the picture and there's a big blow up way out of proportion to what it is about. That can be a big red flag. Which leads me on to my next point, which is someone who doesn't hold themselves accountable. That I think is a huge red flag in a relationship because how can you build something sustainable if your partner cannot admit fault, cannot apologize, cannot accept that they've done wrong. That is really hard because then there's no open dialogue, not a conversation to how to improve things where there's no apology or even you find yourself apologizing for their behavior. That is really bad. And I know that a lot of us probably do that just to smooth things over, to help bring it more calm around us. But Ultimately, that is not good. You cannot build a healthy, sustainable relationship if someone finds it very difficult to hold themselves accountable. Another red flag is when someone becomes super secretive. That could be, for example, changing names on their phone book to initials. Yeah, that's one. Uh, <laughs> when you see that, there's something going on. The harsh reality, but if conversations between you and your partner start to become shorter, they're becoming longer with someone else. 
And I think with the secretive thing, you know, if they're protective over their phone, if passcodes are being changed, if there's two phones, it definitely opens things up. And I think when you have the need to start checking the phones, that relationship's already dead in the water. And you know it, but you just don't want to accept it. When there's loss of trust, you can get by, but you're not happy. You're not in a healthy, loving relationship. It's so hard to be if you've got like one foot in the door, one foot out. If you're thinking, oh yes, I want to trust that person, but the behavior, the patterns, the conversations is just not what I want, not what I deserve. I'm not gonna tell you what to do and I know that if we ignore the red signs, we do get burnt and probably takes a few burns before we actually pick up the confidence to put our foot down and really be firm with our boundaries. Ultimately, that's what is important to do because otherwise you're constantly compromising and you're gonna end up miserable. Another favorite, another favorite is the deflection. You can be asking one things and they completely deflect the conversation onto something else. If you're asking a simple question like, what are you up to? What are your plans for this evening? Where are you going? And they suddenly deflect the conversation and say, oh, I have a headache. Oh, I feel so tired. I'm gonna take a nap. Oh, I have blisters on my feet. <laughs> it could be anything, but suddenly they don't wanna answer the question. They don't wanna discuss the last night out. They've got nothing to say. And you're just left thinking, right, well, uh, wow, you wanna create some distance? This is the way to do it. And in any relationship, there's that tug of war, kind of that push and pull. Things like this happen, super toxic. And it often happens between a love avoidant and a love addict, as they call it. The love avoidant kind of does the love bombing and showers you with love and affection and poems and letters and flowers, and then they pull away. And then the love addict is like desperate for that hit of dopamine where they're love bombing again and will do everything in their power to get it. And yeah, ultimately it's a very unhealthy, toxic situation. Another red flag is when suddenly your partner doesn't want you posting them on social media. Definitely kind of alludes to something going on, something secretive. Either they wanna keep the options open or they wanna be private about the relationship and they don't want people knowing that you're in a relationship. Either one is bad, in my opinion. I think it's great to be private about a relationship and I'm all for that, but here and there, a little casual video, you know, shouldn't be a problem. Another point with a love avoidant is that they are known for being the victim. In any scenario, in any argument, in anything, they suddenly become the victim. Even if they've been cheating on you. Oh, you weren't around. You were so preoccupied. I didn't really feel like you cared that much. They become the victim because they can't hold themselves accountable, because they can't admit fault, because they haven't grown. They're just, you know, stuck in this position where they feel like their only way to kind of get out of the situation is to claim victimhood. So you empathize with them. You know, that again is very toxic. In my opinion, for a relationship to work, the two people need to choose each other. Both need to be willing to work on that relationship and fight for it. If one person is putting all the effort in and the other one isn't, then the relationship is just gonna crumble. And that also is about compromise. In a relationship, it's so important to have compromise. And if someone is bending over backwards to accommodate the other person and the other person doesn't wanna move an inch out of their comfort zone and everything's on their terms and everything's at their convenience, that is not a situation you wanna be in and that's a red flag. That could be you relocating to a new country, taking a new job, just to make the relationship last. And again, it, that's not how it sh should be. It should be a two-way street, both compromising, both working for each other, both helping each other, supporting each other, loving each other, and wanting to choose each other. And going back to victimhood and being triggered and super defensive, if you don't have, between your partner, that safe space to talk and discuss openly, talk about how you feel without being worried about their reaction, that's a red flag. You should have that safe space between you and your partner to talk openly about how you feel and not think that you're gonna be met with an aggressive confrontation or an argument, that you can just be open and express and there'll be no judgment. Okay, and this is hands down the biggest red flag and for me the most noticeable one. Inconsistent behavior, it's empty promises. When your partner tells you one thing and they do another, it could be something, for example, like, I'm not gonna have a late night tonight, I'm gonna come home early, and then they stay out all night. Oh, you're feeling unwell, I wanna take care of you, I'm gonna drop over some groceries to you or something sweet like this, and then they never come. When it happens a lot and when there's a pattern of behavior whereby you can't then trust their word, this is bad for two reasons. Firstly, if someone makes you an empty promise, they either 
couldn't fulfill it and were just saying it to please you at the time or genuinely don't really care to make you happy or make you feel good. You build up that hope, that expectation only for it to fall flat on its face and you're suddenly left thinking, wow, that was... Uh that was bad, that didn't feel good. All human beings are flawed, we all have our flaws, but it's important to have a partner who also wants to self-develop and grow and be the best version themselves for you and for themselves. So those were my red flags and what I perceive as red flags, but if you guys have other red flags that you've noticed or experienced, let me know in the comments below. But I wanna to talk to you now about my healing and recovery and how I bounced back from this traumatic experience where I found out my partner had a secret girlfriend. We were living in different cities, different countries, and yeah, there was a whole other relationship going on. When I found out the truth, it was pretty devastating. The worst part of it was that I was so confused when he was breaking up with me because I was giving so many random excuses. I had like some suspicion, obviously, but when I found out the truth, it was heartbreaking. I feel like the biggest way I got over this was realizing it wasn't about me. It was all about that person, what that person wanted, the way they were feeling. Learning to accept that the breakdown of this relationship wasn't necessarily caused by me. <laughs> and I think many women who have been cheated on, they suddenly think maybe I was a problem. Oh, if I was different, maybe we would have stayed together, maybe it would have lasted. You could have been all those things and they still would have cheated. It's totally on them. A really important point is that when someone does something bad to us, our ego suddenly thinks, if I really mattered to them, they would treat me differently. But when you look at it from your higher self, you realize, the way that person treated me is a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves. I know hurt people hurt other people, so that person obviously was going through a lot and I think learning to accept that and just have empathy. So that was a really kind of cathartic moment when I suddenly realized that. It totally shifted my perspective and often my friends will be like, wow, um, so this girl knew that you were in a relationship the whole time and I was like, yeah, she did. <laughs> but I don't have any resentment or anger for that person because I didn't have a connection. I didn't even know this person. I wasn't in a relationship with that person. Whereas my partner, I was for two and a half years. I mean, she has her own value system and if that's how she wants to conduct herself, that's on her. When a partner cheats on you and they've cheated on their partner before you, they're gonna cheat on the next one and the next one is gonna be a pattern. So I feel released <laughs> from that scenario. People would ask me, oh, do you feel lonely now? And I'm just thinking, I felt way more lonely when I was in that relationship, when my partner was pulling away, when there was distance, when I didn't know where they were, what they were doing, who they were with. That felt way worse than after the breakup when I had clarity and I knew the situation. It was, it was devastating, but I didn't feel lonely. You are so much better off being on your own than being with someone that doesn't treat you well, that it doesn't make you feel good, doesn't play the game straight, that just, yeah, it's kind of like making you look a fool behind your back, you know? Life can be unfair and I'm sure we can all call on different experiences we've had in our past where things have happened that weren't fair, but that's life. If we didn't feel sadness, despair, and complete devastation, we would never know what happiness is. You should be focusing on your goals, what you want now, what's gonna further your life and make you feel good, rather than worrying and checking their social media and seeing what they're up to, what they're doing, who they're with. That's so unhealthy, so toxic, and I know it's so hard to do, but you really need to shift that focus, make that cut, block, 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 blockity block. Blocking doesn't necessarily mean you hate that person, it just means that you don't want that open conversation, that dialogue anymore. That's not helpful to your recovery, to your healing, that's not gonna further you in any way, it's just gonna bring you right back to square one where you're thinking about that person. And also a little side note, is a guy always wants what they can't have. Instead of being the girl they could have had, you should be the girl they can't have. I'd love to hear from you guys what have helped you, and we can have a little discussion in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more like this, give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and guys, I'll see you in my next one. Bye!